Um, so the first lesson is Jupiter. Um, and I guess one main reason or one big reason to um, to talk about Jupiter is that we will use it a lot. It's a convenient way of teaching and showing things. Um, Diana, do you want to say anything about why Jupiter is good to learn before we start? Or I think it's uh, uh, great at the very beginning when you are starting to write your Python scripts. It's easier to, it's more readable. Uh, it's, uh, uh, I find it easier to debug as well. But uh, I would say, I mean, if you're used to IPython or just running it from the command line, that is uh, great as well. So it's really a matter of preference. If you are used to Python and you have a favorite way of using it, then just go ahead and use that instead. Um, so getting started with Jupyter. So let's just show one way of opening it. This is how I will use it. Um, and just um, uh, to note, so um, in the installation instructions um, that you hopefully did take a look at before the course, if you didn't, just ask questions. But um, if you did, there is um, also in instructions for how to open Jupyter for whatever method of installing it you uh, you chose. So I will activate a Conda environment in my terminal. And uh, while Yarno is doing this, I will mention that you can also open it from the Anaconda Navigator. So if you prefer that, that's perfectly okay. And if you if you're using Anaconda and did not create a special environment, um, then you don't need to activate anything. You just run this command, Jupyter Lab. And this opens a new uh, browser window or a new tab in the browser. And there's a lot of stuff here. Um, that's probably not the most useful information um, at this point. So, oh, I'm running it in my main folder. Is there a way of easily going to another folder here or should I just restart? Maybe I'll just go to Python for Sycom. Okay, that works. Also, so th there is a, a file browser here. Um, you can clearly go to into folders. I will use it to delete my previous version of this, uh, this session. Okay, so now I have no files in the folder. And if you have nothing open, it will automatically open this launcher, which will show you the uh, what kinds of um, uh, pro well, what programming languages you can use in Jupyter, basically. So this is a Python tree kernel, and it's the only one I have. So I can open a Python tree notebook here. If you don't see this, um, you can open this view by pressing this plus button here. OK, so I will open a new one. And immediately I will rename it. So left click or right clicking here and rename, I will call it demo. Yeah, that's always a good practice. <clears throat> Although I have a lot of untitled Same. documents as well. Yeah. So it, it will automatically, oh, um, it's showing like it didn't save it. Okay. Well, I mean, that blue dot, or that dot in my mind means it didn't save it, but um, maybe it's because it's empty. Um. OK, so we have this notebook. And what we can do here, we can write Python code and run it. And it will show the output immediately. Or we can use Markdown to write a narrative. So you can essentially, you can make this a document where you write some description, and then you write the code. Um, and then you write some more description. and then some more code and so on. So that makes it nicer for sharing your code or sharing your workflow with other people. They can immediately see what you've done and like see the code actually in the document. So it says code here. It refers to this one. Um, well, they, they could have multiple cells here. It's a plus button. So now you have multiple cells. So this code uh, refers to this particular cell that I have selected. I will change it into Markdown. Markdown is the language that we use in the collaborative document, um, so in the notes. So it, it it should look relatively straightforward. If it doesn't, that's fine. Um, the point is not to learn Markdown, but um, 
you can do formatting in uh, in addition to text with Markdown. So um, this one hash means title. This is like the, the biggest title available. Um, so this is a title. And I should add that it's the same markdown that we are using uh, for the notes document. Yeah. And you don't have to be great at it to to use it. I mean, I think you can just uh, learn a few syntaxes and that's okay. So this is some text. I'll just write that. And maybe I'll do uh, like we do the question. So a bullet point. Oops. So it, it actually does some, um, just like the notes, it, it does some syntax highlighting here so that you see there's a title and the bullets, they're different. But now if I press play here, it will actually run this markdown code, which means generate a formatted text area here. Okay, now I can also do Python code. So this is just markdown code or raw text. Code in this case means Python code because this was a Python notebook. So let's just do a simple one, uh, one plus one, run yeah. that. And if you install a different kernel, let's say you work with Julia instead, then uh, if uh, the kernel is going to interpret uh, uh, well, the cell that, uh, that you are uh, marking as code will be interpreted by the kernel that you have chosen. Yep. Actually, I will steal this. Uh, notes from here for a while. Um, okay, so uh, what else should we try? So um, just a quick intro to Python, I suppose. So we can do a for loop. And if we do for loop for um, starting from the, the value of i starts from zero and goes up to two, we use the range function and actually write the number three. So it, it's uh, zero, one, two, um, that's three different numbers. Um, so that's kind of the logic. Uh, and let's just print the number and run this cell. So I should print the numbers zero, one, and two. Uh, or you can do sum of range from zero to five. So now I'm not using print, but it will still print the last thing that happens the output of the last line. So just like here in one plus one, it printed two, it prints 10 here. Okay, so this is essentially uh, most of uh, Jupyter. Let's quickly also show a magic function. So there are a few commands that don't exist in Python, but are very useful in Jupyter. And they start with a percentage. So we can print the directory we are at. So this stands for print working directory. And if you use a Unix terminal in Linux or in Mac OS, um, this will be a familiar command. So this is where we are right now in my file system. But not all Unix commands exist here. So there's another command called bash, which will run. So bash is a essentially a, a terminal. So you can run any terminal command here so to host name, for example. So this will print the name of my computer, which is some string of numbers and characters. But um, I guess so the, the thing I want to demonstrate is that even though this doesn't exist as a magic command, so this is what an error looks like, it does exist in this, um, in this uh, inside this bash command. Also, everything now in this cell is this magic command because it starts with two uh, percentage signs. So that changes how the cell works in general. Okay, yeah, exactly. So for else? one line, it's one percentage for the whole cell. You should use two percentages followed by, uh, by the magic. And maybe I could add that, I mean, using these magic commands is a great way of integrating bash and uh, and running other programs that uh, that you have compiled within your Jupyter uh, notebook. Yeah. So you could integrate, for example, R or C or Fortran and run it from the cell. But you just make need to make sure that uh, you do have the correct uh, environment when you are trying to uh, to do that. Um, but yeah, uh, one command which I think is uh, very nice as well is the ls uh, magic one. If you could show it, and that will okay. print all the magic commands that are available. 
Oh, um, uh, to you. Just one word. LS magic one word. It's always one word for uh, okay. for the command, That's and then you may have options follow following. And then if you uh, yes uh, expand, okay. then you can it's see everything that is available as line magic or uh, cell magic. I think so that's line great. magic is mm. with one percentage sign and cell magic is with two. Exactly. Yeah. And uh, this may not be so uh, instructive, but you could use, for example, uh, magic or quick ref, one word, um, to uh, know more about them. Or you can just uh, Google for them or check in the, uh, yes, exactly, in the documentation. So that's, uh, that's, uh, Okay. It's like find it quite uh, what a uh, fairly long a uh, she, uh, but, cheat sheet, uh, yeah. but uh... um, was there a magic command called pip? Let's see. So, um, I mean, sometimes it, it is very useful to be able to also install packages from. So yeah, there is. A there is, and there is well. conda as well as a magic command. Okay. Should we demonstrate the sort of the biggest problem uh, that people will run into, or should we just go to the exercises first? We have one minute. Okay, so well, um, let's just show one thing that might, this is something you might run into that might be a problem. So we have here, we have run a for loop that sets a value for the variable i. So here I can run and i equals two, okay? What if I add a cell here and run this? What do you think should happen? What do you think will happen? Well, the way Jupyter works is that it just, it runs the cells in the order that you run them in. It doesn't care about what order they're written in. So this will still be equal to two, this i here. Whoop, oh, what did I do? Okay. <laughs> So that might be a problem if somebody else now gets your notebook. If, if you take your notebook and uh, send it to someone else and they try to run it. So there is this very convenient button here that will run all the, uh, restart the kernel, just forget everything and run all the cells from the beginning. So this is basically what will happen when you give your notebook to someone else. They will run it every cell from the beginning. So. Now it ran this cell uh, correctly, but this cell uh, I doesn't mean anything. So it just failed and gave an error. It's a very useful error. Name I is not defined. So you know what's happening. Um, so I will just delete this cell because this is a problem. It shouldn't be there. It should be here. And let's try again. So it's always useful to do this uh, restart kernel and rerun all the cells in order before sending your notebook to anyone. Oh, host name not found. That's interesting. Okay, right, because that was, a, uh, actually I was showing you that it doesn't exist. Okay, let's remove that error as well. Okay, now everything worked. All the cells worked correctly. Okay, so um, I guess we'll go to the exercises then. So let's do whoop, exercise. One is um, yeah, almost at the top. So starting and exploring Jupiter. Um, and if you are new to Jupiter, um, it's very much enough to just do that. Um, there are some, I mean, it, it's good if you get to this first one, which is run some code in Jupiter. Um, the, le the rest are some a bit more Slightly more complicated exercises, and if you get all the way to the end, oh, I mean, I don't really expect you to get all the way to the end necessarily. Um, if you if you do, then go on to exercise three. Uh, it's an op optional discussion exercise, so you can write things into the notes, or you can discuss with people close to you if they are also done with all the exercises. Um, so we'll give you fifteen minutes, and then we'll do a quick wrap up. So go ahead. Should we write some information in the notes about the exercise time? Yes, I. Uh... Okay. 
well come back. Um, I hope you had a good time with the exercises and uh, got Jupiter running. So we had um, a couple of questions and I think the, the biggest issue is that Bash uh, indeed doesn't work on Windows. It's an operating system specific thing. Uh, so there is a magic command, uh, where's the percentage sign there, um, called CMD that should work on Windows. Um, so you can use that one instead. It will not work on my system. So you can try running it, but yeah, it does not exist. Yeah. But sorry, okay. yes, we missed that. So, uh, but uh, bash, uh, bash equivalent in uh, Windows should be CMD. So whatever we tried uh, in the bash uh, magic set, um, in the bash cell, then uh, you could try that with CMD. Okay, so that's everything about Jupiter for now. We will like, be using it for the a lot of the course, so you will get used to it. Um, is there any other notable questions to bring up? There's a lot of questions and a lot of answers, which is great. Yes, I think most of them uh, are uh, answered. So uh, yeah, maybe we can just uh, wrap up with when to use Jupyter and uh, when, is, when is it not so great? Yeah. Yeah, so um, do you use Jupyter a lot? Or it's actually anything? mostly for teaching and uh, and for uh, visualizing uh, plots. Yeah, it's really useful for visualizing because you can it can display the plots or any images inside the uh, the notebook. So it, it's kind of inlining it. So that's useful. Yeah. It's good for quickly changing a single cell. You don't have to rerun the whole thing. So if you have a really, if you have a process that takes a few minutes to run and you want to work on the very last 10 seconds of it, um, you may not run, want to run the whole thing every time you're testing it. So just run the last couple of cells. Um, and why should you not use Jupyter? There's a few, actually, um, a few good reasons to not use Jupyter as well. Um, I think the main, most important one is the topmost one here. So they don't promote modularity. So yeah, writing functions in Jupyter notebooks or moving things into um, importable files is, I mean, it doesn't happen automatically. It's something you need to think about when you're writing the notebooks. Yes, and uh, one yeah. thing I would mention here, it's also written uh, in the material, is that uh, the MB time extension, that's uh, that's really great if if you are versioning and controlling your uh, notebooks, and you should do that. Yeah. So that will allow you to see uh, differences between uh, different notebooks, which is okay. not uh, straightforward um, when you yeah. work with Git, yeah. or other version controls. The, Tools. Okay. And yeah, there's some other things written down here, but um, so you can read on your own time. Now it's time for a break. Um, so do take a break. You can come back to the exercises or any part of this um, later, uh, but it is the, it, it's actually very useful for, or very important for learning that you also take breaks if you were really um, uh, working on this one, um, then take some time off to uh, take your hands off your keyboard and walk around and then yeah, come back. So we'll take uh, nine minutes and then we come back at the uh, at, uh, um, short. Let's come back. Two minutes past. And uh, we'll continue. The yeah. yeah. We'll um, continue so with the, NumPy. Yeah. Um, all right. So see you after the break. Bye.